Whether you're brand new to the game and been playing for a long time, Customs is a difficult map to learn. So in this guide, I've compressed a lot of important information on both spawns, parkour, loot, and key spawns to help you master Customs. So stick around and enjoy this Ultimate Customs Guide. First place we're going to start off is just quickly going to have a little brief look of the map and this is going to be in the description down below. I didn't actually make this map but all the credits go to Marvlin but I just want to teach you guys something super quickly here it's the importance of spawns and understanding where you spawn and where to look. As an example some of the spawns in the game simply like this one here it's just down on the embankment and you've also got this one down here at Trailer Park and sometimes you can actually have an enemy spawn here when you spawn here. If you're quick enough off the bat, you can actually run all the way through parking and catch an angle on them before they even remotely spawn. See, the problem with these two spawns can be seen very apparently when you get the railroad to Tarkov spawn, like I showed earlier, and you run straight through and throw a nade. If you get killed off spawn and you get angry about it, just understand what happened and why. So an example would be if I was to get the trailer park spawn, I know that there's a pretty good chance someone's actually straight ahead. So instead of that, I would actually either run this way or I would move directly into the trailer park. Spawn knowledge is an important skill and every time you spawn, take note. And you'll start to understand the more experienced you become as a player, you'll start to recognize a lot of these spawns that you're getting, they happen a lot and a lot of the fights can become very predictable. If you're on top of it, you can already pre-peak a spot and kill someone before they even know you're there. At this current state in the game, every customs match starts at 35 minutes and we've started off here in the parking. The first thing we're going to do is head away from Big Red, a uh, noticeable red shed towards this bus at the back here to check for the East Wing 310 key. Now this is a great key to get your hands on for a shoreline room um, in the East Wing that spawns some really good stuff. First thing we're going to do is we're heading across here is we're going to check make sure no one spawned in Trailer Park but we're gonna head across the road. And this is the road that I'm talking about. So if you spawn down here make sure that you just don't run this way because a lot of people will smack you from there. So what I would do is run straight into storage. Sometimes I can jump on this car and head straight towards the roof. And I usually have a look around and uh, make sure no one else is moving towards this area. First thing we're gonna do is head past the stuffle bag and quickly check for this little med bag here for Saliwas. Especially in the early game, Saliwas are worth a fortune. So that's a really good spot when you're doing your early task, trying to get some med kits obviously for therapists. So we're gonna quickly jump towards the roofs again. And I'm just going to say, don't run around too much on these, um, but you can get some really good angles to inside the train station and, you know, inside near Big Red, or if you're having fights along here, you can get a good angle on people. But obviously all these roofs are made of metal, so they make a lot of sound. So I wouldn't be running around here like an elephant because you may get spotted and killed. You can also jump up in other ways as well. But we're going to head towards the Crossroads Extract and check for another East Wing 310 key on the left hand uh, driver's seat of this van. Uh, we've got a large green crepe, another large green crepe, and we're gonna head away from the crossroads extract. So if you spawn on the other side of the map for reference, this is your extract and it is always open. So we're on this side, the left hand side or the west side, and we're gonna be heading towards one of the most reputable areas or the most dangerous areas, the big red. And we're moving away from these little detachables which we'll cover in a second. But we're just going to head inside and I'm going to show you a little cheeky parkour spot that I usually jump and check every single time I get the spawn. So if I was to spawn inside Big Red, the first thing I'd do is run up, go up here and have a look inside uh, Trailer Park, see if anyone's jumping over the bin or over the wall. I'll have a look through storage and make sure no one's there either. To get down, you just run down the same way you ran up. Now we're going to head up towards Customs Office. Now you guys may know this area from a few tasks along the way. Obviously, you need to grab a package from here, or you also need to grab a document to plant factory for a messenger from the past, a very notorious task. But this area's got a few little spots. You can check the front for flash drive, especially in the early game, uh, for skier, that helps out heaps. You can also search them for CPUs and such. But kicking in this door, what I call breach door, we're gonna head inside and check for the East Wing 306 key, front of that laptop right there. It's a good key, and down below, obviously, that's where you grab your document. We've also got a safe here along the way as well, and it's a decent little check. You can get some good angles from the top there, especially if you're fighting people. You can look down uh, through that window and shoot them if they're outside Big Red. So I keep this key in the late game for the PvP, and obviously the safe is a decent little pull as well. But we can hang towards the train yard. Now, train yard 
is a decent little area, but be careful because there's a lot of PvP spots here, a lot of spawns close together. This is a very high traffic area, so when you're doing this jump showing right now, don't stay up here too long, and if you do, make sure you toss your backpack. But you can get a really nice view of the other ridge, people running across, and you can get some really dirty shots off. But like I said, don't stay up there too much, and don't walk around on metal because people will hear you and uh, come and hunt you and kill you. As you can see to my left, we've got the blue detachable. There's a filing cabinet in there, but we're not going to cover it just yet. But this is a little gap that not actually a few people don't know about, believe it or not. Um, we we'll call it gap or slit and it allows you to get to the other side of this wall. If you, however, have someone on there and you want to get around them, you can actually jump on here and go prone under the train to pull out another angle during PvP to try and confuse your enemy. And there's a few different ways you can get in and around these areas. So, so you can see if someone's watching slit there, I could just pull an angle on them. But the more you know the map, then the more cheeky spots that you pull on people, the more you often throw them off. Like an example, you can get on that train on my left, but the parkour is quite hard and we're going to cover it in this video. But you can also get on top of this shack here and get some really good views all the way into the construction. It is near the start of main bridge on the west side. You can look all the way across to the construction. Anyone crossing these land bridges are in a very bad spot and you can snap them up quite easily. Customs is all about throwing your enemy off by giving them weird angles that, you know, they wouldn't normally peek. There are multiple ways to get across from one side, the west side to the east side. Main bridge being probably one of the safest ways because there's more cover along the way. Just avoid the scavs here near ice cream or triple stack because there's a lot of scavs around there that can ruin your day quite easily. But we're going to head towards one of the most notorious places on customs and that is construction. Now, construction is a very scary place, especially for new players, but I want to run you through some of the basic callouts for this area. Um, the first ones are these little breaches you walk through, and they are numbered from this left hand most side being breach one. You've also got breach two and breach three. Now, these little breaches can be met with a sniper scav above this building here. So as soon as you walk through, if you do get shot, just be wary of that guy up there. He is there at the start of every single raid, bronze pocket watch or anything in this area, and you get killed. Just know that they bring a pistol or something and try and kill him. So we're going to be heading into Elbow. Now Elbow is not a very notorious area, but there's a dead scav in there which you need to grab a key off and also a duffel bag. Uh, we'll cover that probably in a separate video in some of my beginner guides. But we're going to head past the bronze pocket watch truck away from A-frames and we're going to teach you guys this little jump over if you want to get away from, you know, you got your pocket watch or whatever, you want to get away from that area. You can actually just jump over this what I call ninja jump and we're going to head towards hill 1. Now hill one is where dreams go to die. There's a lot of people that like to hang around in these bushes up here. So please, please be careful. Um, I can't name the number of times someone's jumped out and uh, killed me, but you can get some really good angles, especially into construction. So if you're fighting someone, you can go up there and pull an angle on them. Um, it's a really good angle to pull on them as well. Now we're gonna head towards pit now. Now pit is a pretty dangerous area. I have a lot of PVP fights around this area, but we're basically just going to not really walk through this area too much because there's not much to show. But we are going to show you this new sniper scav that got added recently. Um, keep an eye out for this guy because a lot of people will get killed by him and don't realize what's shooting at them. They think it's players or a hacker. Just understand that he's there most of the time. Um, and we're going to head towards Factory Shacks. Factory Shacks is part of a task here that which you're going to need this key called the Portable Cabin Key of Factory Zone, in which you've got to unlock this door and head to the right and grab a document. But for the sake of time, you know, we've got no document there, but you've actually got a weapons case. But there's a cool little angle that you can use and there's other ways to get up. But if you use the door, you can do this at any strength. You simply jump on the rail, jump on the door and then toss your bag and you can go prone here and get some really, really good angles along the train bridge and also all throughout bus station. This really helps out, especially when you're trying to fight someone or, you know, set up your sniper headshots for Shooter Born in Heaven. As we head past these silos, I'm just going to quickly show you guys up close what tower he spawns on. So please watch that spot for the sniper scav. We're going to head through connector and something that people don't realize is if you actually hug hard left here, you won't make any noise. You won't hit barbed wire and they won't hear you coming. So it's all about how you approach the barbed wire. If you want to get through there, just hug it and make sure you don't hit it. As we head away from bus station, we're going to be heading to one of the first caches of this video or hidden caches. Um, these are little hidden stashes around the place and I'll put the map in the description down below if you guys want to know where all of them are. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to cover every single one of them. 
There is no location on customs more dangerous than three-story dorm, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. As we head inside, the first thing you got to be worried about other than players is the custom scab boss, Rashala. Him and four others will be in here sometimes. There is a about 33% chance for him to spawn either between here or the gas station. And they are heavily armored, and if you're not prepared, they will kill you. So when you walk in the first door, please, please check for him. I've had them all down the end there. They like to hang down the very end of the first floor. But as we head inside, we're going to be checking for the factory exit key, which is going to be found next to this TV, which is a decent little check, about 150k at the moment, but much more in the early game. As we head towards the second floor, still being careful for Rashala and players, we're going to head towards this bed, and we're going to jump on it, and we're going to head left. We're going to head into dorm room 205. And the reason I recognize this room or try to teach you guys this room is because there's jackets in here that are really good for keys. Like I found the 104 key, sorry, ZB14 and 105, but also the machinery key, which a lot of people buy off the flea market, but it's about 30K in the first couple of days of wipe. So if you're finding these keys, you know, you can be flipping them. We've also got the dorm room 204 key, which is a safe and a weapon cabinet, which you can check for shotguns that you need for the tasks in the early game. Also, a little bit of cash boost never hurt no one. At the same time, I just want to run you past the fact that these keys aren't worth hardly anything compared to shoreline keys. So while you're doing your task, guys, you can be hitting all these key spawns. You can be making a decent amount of money by hitting like dorm room 215 for the lab arsenal key, which is about 60,000 at the moment, but of 100,000 in the early game, you know, so you've got keys like that. You've got a safe down the end while you're checking your task keys. You could be hitting 214 at the same time. You know, and when you head inside, you got ammo on the bed and another safe. So there is ways to make money on customs, even though it's very dangerous. As we head outside, we're going to be just showing you guys that on the side of the car, you can't actually access the first door or the third floor. So if you do hear metal, understand that they are going to come from the second floor. This helps in PvP situations because this is a very high traffic area. So if you hear metal, just understand, make sure you keep all the doors shut and be listening out for noise cues. That's one way to win fights in dorms. As we head to the third floor, I'm sorry, I had to throw that in there. This is just some little things around the place. Be careful on the third floor. Rashala can like be crouched in some of these little spots around the corners here and he's pulled a few sneaky little pulls up on me. I've seen all of them uh, inside that kitchen, so be careful. As we check for an MBSS, we're going to head towards Marked Room. Now, Marked Room is a juicy room. As we head inside, there's a few awesome loot spawns here, like some good guns, but I've heard of people and screenshots of red key cards being found in documents cases. Well, I've found multiple weapons cases myself, about six so far. You can find key tools, money, and you can also find docs cases full of random keys and some really sweet guns. So it's worth the money. However, it's a 25 use key, so the more you use it, it may break eventually on you, but it's definitely worth the investment. You can hit this one at the top, doing the crouch trick so you're not exposed, because it's very open. But we're going to drop down here, and I just want to teach you guys something. When you drop down from the roof, wait till you take damage. If you're doing this in a PvP fight, make sure that you have painkillers on, because you may break a leg. So be careful when you jump down, just wait for the damage and then jump off. As we head towards VX, we're going to find one of the extracts that you have to pay 7,000 rubles for. It is a countdown from 50 seconds, but you don't actually have to be there the entire time. So if you're standing away from it until the last couple seconds, you can quickly jump near the car and then extract. And when it extracts, it'll drive away and no one else can use it. As we head towards the two-story dorm, we're going to find a few more safes around this. There are actually three safes in two-story dorm and a few other juicy things. The first unlock on our right hand side here is the dorm guard desk key, the G desk key, which is actually a really decent key for the money. You know, you got an ammo case, you've got a weapon rack with AKs and a large black weapons case. You got a duffel bag, you've also got a weapon crate here. But as we head down to the very end, we're going to chuck a left here to dorm room 110. Now, Dorm Room 110 is actually a really good key because it's got a safe, but it also, more importantly, on the left hand side has a fuel conditioner and a flash drive spawn. Obviously, fuel conditioner and flash drives are both needed for tasks, so this helps. But completely opposite the room, and the reason why it's so good, is a task key, which is Dorm Room 114, which you need for a therapist task. But at the same time, you can get some meds like Saliwas, a PC to check for flash drives, and another safe, believe it or not. But as we head to the second floor, once again, Watch out, because this area is a very high PvP traffic area. A lot of fights I've had here, and a lot of people trying to get angles onto the three-story dorm. I've had countless fights here, so be careful when you push up. 
And also keep an eye out for Rashala as well because he can spawn in here. A good indicator is when you're walking through, if a lot of the doors are open, generally that means either a new player is here or there is Rashala. So if you walk up to the second floor and see a lot of doors open, it's usually a warning indicator that something's up. So once again, listen out for metal. Audio cues are a good way to win more fights inside dorms. No one can actually access the first floor here as I've showed. As we head towards the site of construction or the sniper scab I showed earlier, we're gonna head into this little locked off area here. And as you can see, you can't actually access the first floor from this, so you have to go all the way around. But it's dorm room 105. Now, once again, this is the key that I found in the jacket just before, but it's still a cheap key for a safe. The safes are great because you can find a lot of items that you need for tasks along the way. So we're gonna head towards Hill 2. Now, this is a very high traffic area because a lot of people hug the wall. But when I come along here, I always check for this flash drive right next to this duffel bag. This flash drive has actually been here a couple times and especially in the early game, 300K or more for a flash drive. Um, obviously they've crashed now later into the white, but these are really good things to know, especially when you're doing your customs tasks, you can hit the flash drive, you know, you can make that little bit of extra money if you need to. Um, so we're gonna head towards the gas station now or new gas. And once again, we're gonna be checking for some more keys. So you may be doing your task, but if you check this ambulance right here, we'll be checking for the Emricon key, which is both a task key and a really sweet key for loot and med supplies. Hello, motherfucker. Like I said earlier in the video, Rashala can spawn at the gas station, so be careful when you're running into the front of it. If you are fighting them at the front, I would suggest trying getting inside and not fighting them from the front because they can shoot through the windows and pull some stupid angles on you. My advice is to try and bait them towards the back and use the doors to try and force them to come to you. So if they open the door stupidly and walk in, you can kill them one by one. Checking for Rashala, he likes to hang around these barrels, so please be careful when you're pushing along the side. As you can see, I'm checking through the gaps here. Inevitably, Rashala is doing his hide where he crouches in a spot waiting for you to come especially when you're dominating his group. The first thing you're gonna see when you search for Rishala is a chance for the golden TT. You need to hand this in found and raid, however, you can't put it in your secure container. Searching his pockets, you're gonna find some stuff like physical Bitcoin and also labs key cards. His followers, on the other hand, have a chance at AVS plate carriers, which you need to hand in found and raid, and also black rocks for a ragman task. So these counters found and raid and it's probably the most efficient way to get them for this task. As we head inside, we're going to unlock the key to the gas station storage room. This is a great key to have early because it has two med cases, which are brilliant for Saliwas in the early game. You got a little crate here with a cabinet key. Make sure the description says the gas station manager's office key because there are a few cabinet keys. So searching this little safe is a little nice cash boost that never hurt no one. As we're heading away from the gas station, we'll come back and cover a few things here, but I just want to quickly show you Hill 3. This area is often camped and there's a lot of angles and sniper scav up on top of that building that can really ruin your day. So when you are fighting scav boss from this side, my advice to you is try and get up close. You don't want to be hanging around here because they can lob F1s all the way from gas station and ruin your day. The ammo shack is pretty awesome as well. You got a little bit of an ammo crate and a duffel bag, but we're getting towards military checkpoint here and this is gonna be another unlock, but this is also a quite high traffic area and a lot of scavs like to hang around the front of here. So if you need scav kill tasks, that's great. Jumping over this barra can be shown. If you jump sideways, your character actually jumps higher. So if you need to get over here, make sure you use that trick. And we're gonna be heading towards the military checkpoint and we're gonna unlock it and check a few things. Now we're heading inside the military checkpoint. We're not actually gonna find a lot of loot, but it's really good for AKs in the early game as well as grenades and a little bit of ammo. This back blue rack here can spawn AKUs and sometimes suppressed AK-74 UBs. As we head past here, we're gonna be checking for the 114 key. This little jacket back here is a chance to that key that I showed earlier, uh, the 114 key and also Saliwas. Always check this jacket, even though it's quite exposed because that key is awesome in the early game. So here we are back at gas station. I just wanted to show you guys a few things while we're here and it's the Goshan key. Now this key is worth a fortune and you need to hand it in. Uh, making our way to the third seat here on the left hand side is the Goshan key. But that's about 2.5 million at the moment, which is ridiculous. Um, so please check that every single time. We can make our way past this wall by jumping on this pile of rubble and boosting across. 
This spot over here is actually inaccessible from the other side without using the factory shortcut, which we'll show in a second. As we head towards Warehouse 4, we're gonna quickly just check this little crate in front of Warehouse 4 here. But as we head past towards this blue car here, we're gonna pop open the boot and we're gonna find Ollie Logistics Key. Now, Ollie Logistics Key is needed for a Ragman task, so you need this key at one point in your tasking. So always check this if you're heading around this area. We're gonna quickly make our way towards Factory Shortcut, however, and I'm gonna show you guys that this can be unlocked with the Factory Exit Key. However, this key is now a 50 use key. This is a recent change which allows you to repair your key, however, so you can repair it before it breaks. However, unlocking this, you need to use it twice to get through, so that's two uses each time. But it allows good PvP angles and allows you to get some really nice angles on Rashala if you're fighting them from the gas station. As we unlock the second door, you guys are just going to get a quick reference of where we are if you are confused. We're at the front of gas station. So we're going to head back and we're going to show you the free way of getting over is walking up this blue car here. Now the trick to doing this and a lot of people seem to miss is you actually walk to the very end of this and you aim for the lip. See how the toilet has a lip there on the right hand side? So you try and actually miss. I know it sounds stupid but if you aim for the right hand side there on the little lip you'll actually get it every single time. Obviously higher strength will help a lot. Um, but we're going to head towards the old gas here. Now, Old Gas Station is actually a very iconic spot and it is actually also an extract. So when we come here, we're going to be checking a few things like scabs. Obviously, there's a lot of them that hang around here. But you can tell the extract is open if the green flares are here. Now, obviously, this is not the extract for me because of my spawn. However, I spawned on the other side, I could get out here. Checking this table for any item in the game. Anything from a fort armor to a pistol case and near on the chair. You can find some really sweet loot in there. It's also to get out, you just go past there and there's a little tunnel. As we head back towards the rubble here, we're going to be checking the god spot. The tree of giving, I call it. But there's a little spot along the ground here where you can find vests on the ground. And also factory exit key has a chance to spawn right there. If you don't find anything, if you keep an eye out for like a vest or something like that, if you search it, you can get some really sweet loot. I've seen other people and pull green key card and many other high ticket keys from vests that spawn on the ground there. This next little trick is something that you don't have to do, but it's something that if you have around 10 strength is possible to do. But if you jump using the trick I showed you earlier, so jumping left to right, jump up on this railing here and then aim for the lip of the train, you can actually get on top of here and get some really, really sweet angles all the way up to substation. A lot of the stuff up there de-renders and you can get some really sweet angles, especially with thermals. So if you're fighting someone or your mate knows someone's up there, you can get some really good angles by using that spot. But we're going to be heading towards one of the best areas in the early game and very underrated area, water. I call this water warehouse, but it's also known as storage building. Now, as we head inside, we're going to see why I call it Water Warehouse, because there's water barrels everywhere. However, there is a weapons case and this little rack back here, these little shelves here are my good spot. Like if I found car batteries along here, Wilston cigarettes, and many, many other types of cigarettes, and everything you're going to need in the early game. I found condensed milk there and heaps of goodies, so it's a really good spot. As well as this big, large weapons crate at the back here, which is a little bit of a... You know, I call it my lucky crate, but, you know, that's just my little secret. We're going to head out the front here and we're going to head a, to the right and we're going to unlock another cache. But like I said earlier, guys, these little hidden caches. For the sake of time, I'm not going to cover them all. But if you want to know where they are, there is a map in the description down below. So we're going to be heading towards one of the sometimes open extracts and this is ZB12. To tell if ZB12 is open, you actually have to keep an eye out for the light. If the light is on, then the extract is open. However, it bugs out sometimes, and even if the light's on, it won't let you out. Don't ask me why, it's Nikita's fault. If we head towards this spot here, we're going to show you another cheeky PvP angle, and it's chemical. I call it chemical because this van in the side here, or container building, is what you need to mark for a chemical task, and in the back you can get some really sweet salivas and med items. And you also on this back shelf here, you can find more cigarettes and other miscellaneous items. But this is the spot that I use to kill a lot of people. I love this spot. 
But if you boost up on this forklift, or in other words, use the side jump trick or look directly downwards, you can actually get up here with a decent level strength. I think it's about five or four. And you can get some really, really good angles up towards substation. If you walk along this door too, you can see out towards gas station and kill Rashala. But be wary, there is a sniper scab that spawns above you. So if you hear metal, don't freak out. Sometimes it may just be him waltzing around. As we head up on top of fuel pit, we can get some really good angles all the way out towards the gas station, but be careful because you're very exposed from substation and the rocks above. As we head past pit, we're gonna be heading towards my favorite thing in the world, my USB van. This USB van is great for flash drives in the early game, checking the front of the actual physical USB ports. You'll see one sticking out there every now and then, and it's a really good spot in the early, and it's been, it's been good to me this patch, I'm gonna tell you what. As we head inside Smokestack, we're gonna be checking two crates. Well, I call it two crate for this reason. But there's a large green weapon crate, and as we head back down, we can check for factory key on the very bottom of the shelf. Factory exit key, like I said, is worth about 150K. We can check for cigarettes along this box and head up to the second green crate. And these are really good for arming yourself in the early game, like some nice attachments for gunsmith. But the dead scav here as well provides some good spawns for the mil military checkpoint key. As well as searching him gives you some really good cigarettes and also a chance at factory key. As we head away from two crate or smokestack, we're gonna head towards one of the main extracts, running past this little pipe here. I'm gonna show you one of the hidden caches, like I said. But if you want the map, guys, remember in the description down below. As we head towards one of the main extracts, ZB11. Now, ZB11 is a really good spot. Be careful as you head down. Sometimes I've had people in here waiting, believe it or not. Um, but it's a really decent extract and it's always open. For reference of where we are, we are between ZB11 and Admin Gate. And we're doing the loop the loop as we head around behind Military Checkpoint. We're not really going to cover that back area there because there's not a lot of loot. But we're heading towards what I call M4 or Repair Shop. As we head inside a repair shop, this is the forklift room, as some people call it. We're gonna be checking this locker here for some goodies and as well as the USEC stash on customs key. This key is a pretty decent little thing because you can get some decent loot and it helps in PVP situations if you need to pull some different angles like jumping on this box and killing someone if you think they're outside. As we work our way around, it's actually a two part key with two unlocks for the same key. The second door here can be unlocked with the same key Heading inside, it's more of the same. We've got a jacket here. We've got a large weapons crate down the bottom here and obviously more angles that you can pull. Now, another little decent trick is if you jump up this railing, you can get a really good look into chemical, especially if you're using thermals, you can walk down this rail and see all the way up to the train jump over. That's a little jump over spot how you get to the other side, that little ramp there up the top. Heading away from that side, we're gonna be checking this back area for more attachments and also some really decent cigarette spawns. Stuff like Wilston's and obviously you can see alkali, screws, random miscellaneous loot and also weapons attachments. There's also a 110 key in there as well in that little red box. But as we head around the back of military checkpoint, we're gonna bust our way through the barbed wire here. And for the sake of time, I speeded this up a lot, but we're gonna be heading into the new customs area all the way up to the notorious substation. Now there's a lot of PVP out here. I've had so many fights up this area, but there's a few, few good reasons for that. And it's also the lab arsenal key. The lab arsenal key is a really good key to get your hands on. Like I said, about 60 to 80K at the moment, which is a decent pull. You got some really sweet attachments along these boxes, black weapons crate, and you've also got a large black weapons crate hidden between these two pillars. Careful, however, it's a very exposed location to search, so I would go prone. Crate, we're gonna be checking this little detachable here for one more large weapons crate here, which is a little decent search, but we're gonna head away from substation and down towards gas station. Then we're gonna show you this one little parkour trick as well. Be careful of these rocks. A lot of people like to sit prone on the left-hand side, but you can actually boost through the wall and the gap here towards gas station, and likewise back through to the other side. So you don't actually have to go all the way around. As we head along the wall, I'm going to show you another little dirty spot here with another hidden cache, but you can actually jump along this wall past the fence. And to reference, guys, we're at the front of New Gas at the moment. Hey guys, so that's it for this customs video. If this helped you in any single way, learn anything at all about customs, you know what to do. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. It helps me out a ton. 
And as always, I stream six days a week on Twitch. The link will be in the description down below. And thank you so much for watching.